The following video clip is from Train Signal's Cisco CCNA training course, featuring nearly 29 hours of Cisco CCNA training. If you've worked as a network admin really for any length of time, you're really familiar with IP addresses. You've probably already done some of what we do here in the course as far as ping and that kind of thing. If not, we're going to cover plenty of that before the course is over. Every PC on our network is going to have an IP address, and so will other network devices. You're going to have printers, you're going to have servers, and they're all going to have an IP address. Now the term for a network device with an IP address is host, and I'm really talking about a PC there. I'll try to use that term as often as possible to get you used to it, but generally when people speak of a host, they are speaking about a PC. Now the host, not the PC, but the host I'm creating this video on, it has an IP address, and we're going to look at that here with the Microsoft command IP config. And even though this is a Cisco-centric centric exam, obviously, since Cisco made it, I wouldn't be surprised to see a few basic Microsoft troubleshooting commands come up on your exam. And frankly, these are commands you need to know in the real world as well, just to even get started with troubleshooting a PC. We're going to look at some of these throughout the course, kind of scattered throughout. But here, we're going to look at IP config by bringing up the command prompt. And I'll just do a change directory here a couple of times to get us back to the prompt. I didn't have to do that. And here's IP config. Now, IP config space slash all is going to give us a lot more information. And we're going to look at that a couple of different times in the course. But right now, I just want to concentrate on this particular IP address. And we'll talk about the default gateway setting later in this section as well. But right now, we're going to concentrate on that IP address and subnet value that we see there. Now, keep that IP address in mind, especially the bit that begins with 192.168, because you may look at that and think, well, you know, that kind of sounds familiar. Maybe that's your IP address at home that you get from your cable provider. We're going to talk about that particular IP address range later in this video. But right now we're going to compare an IP address and a subnet mask. And this allows us to see what network the particular host belongs to. And to do so, we're going to convert both that IP address and subnet mask to binary strings. Now, I want you to take a deep breath if that bothered you, you know. Because if there's any subject I teach that immediately brings, uh, I don't know, shock or fear to a, especially a newcomer to networking, it's binary strings and binary math. You're going to need to master the skills that I show you in this course to pass the Cisco exams and frankly to be a, a world-class networker. But I will also tell you this, there's not one single person in the world who can't learn binary math and can't learn subnetting. And I've taught it to an awful lot of people, literally tens of thousands of people at this point. This is actually when I got started in instruction is when I just got tired of people. Yeah, you know, It really wasn't their fault because they were being taught methods that used tricks. And, you know, you know the ones I'm talking about if you've looked in any of the other books, you know, Magic Octet and the Interesting Number and all this stuff. And when I was learning it, I thought, well, you know, this seems to make it harder. And when I learned binary math myself, you know what the number one reaction is after I teach people binary for a few minutes? They say, that's it. Every single time, I have never seen it fail, whether it's an in-person class, video class, online training course, doesn't matter. Every single time I teach it, I get these relieved looks at the end of it, like, really? That's it? It's not hard. We're going to do a basic conversion here to get you started. But uh, believe me, in the binary math section here in the course, we're really going to do a lot of binary math conversions, subnetting, and give you some practical skills that you can apply on the exam as well. But it all starts with the fundamentals. And the reason binary math tends to scare people a little bit at first is like it's just unfamiliar. It sounds complicated, right? Oh, no, binary math. It's very simple. We're going to do a basic conversion here, and like I said, enough to get us started. And then in the binary math section, we're really going to work hard on this. But I want to tell you this, and I'll tell you again at the binary math section. The key to being really great with this, and we're not interested in good here. We're interested in great. 
the key to becoming great at binary math and subnetting is practice. It is not enough to just watch me do this on a video. You've got to practice it. And when you practice that skill in the days and the weeks and the months leading into your exam, on exam day, it's going to be a breeze for you. But you have to put that practice in. I can't practice it for you. But I am going to show you very clear methods of how to do it. So let's bring up an IP address. We're not going to use 106 there that I put. We're going to use 192.168.1.100. And we're going to convert that to a binary string. Now the format that we're used to seeing IP addresses expressed in, just like that 192.168.1.100, that's called a dotted decimal address. And the values are in decimal, and there are dots separating the decimals. Pretty clever. Took us a long time to think that one up. Before we do a live demo here, I want to tell you again, if you know, and I'm going to say when, when you know the basics of binary and decimal conversions and practice these skills diligently, you can answer any subnetting question that Cisco asks you, that Chris Bryant asks you, that a job interview asks you, that you're asked to do on the job. Hey, can you come up with a little subnetting uh, scheme for us here? I'm telling you right now, it has never failed. Maybe you're anxious to learn this, maybe you're not. But I'm telling you, point blank, when you know the basics of binary and decimal and you practice them, the exam questions are going to be simple for you. And the questions that you're asked in job interviews, and I, I, ask, I ask binary questions in job interviews when I've given them, and I've answered them, and we use it every day. It's a skill we have to have for networking. So let's do a quick live demo here, and you're going to see how really simple this is. Now... We're going to do this step by step, and I'll show you how I do it. And I'm going to erase that, and we're going to do a live demo right here. I'll get rid of the italic. Again, we're going to convert the IP address 192.168.1.100. And again, that's in dotted decimal form. Each one of the numbers in this address, 192, 168, 1 and 100, they are decimal representations of a binary string. And a binary string, you're going to see, it's simply a string of ones and zeros. Because remember, everything we do is what? It's ones and zeros. All you need to do before you get started is write down this string of numbers. Because this is the key it's actually everything we do in binary math. Now, as you get practice, you'll write that out in a heartbeat. You won't even think about it, but when you're starting, it's kind of like, okay, it's 128, then 64, what was that? I've been there, I understand that. The quickest way to remember this, in the meantime, until you've really mastered it, you can go from right to left and start with the number one and then just double it seven times. Because I'm going to tell you, I used to call this the uh, the Bryant Advantage Binary Math Pre-Qualification Exam uh, in my classes, and I still do on occasion. Because like I said, sometimes when you start teaching this, people sit there like they've just been put in the electric chair. It's like, oh boy, here, here, come, here comes that voltage. But it's not difficult at all. If you can do what I just did right there on the whiteboard and add and subtract, you can solve any subnetting problem Cisco gives you any of them. I don't care what it is. I don't care how difficult it looks at first. It's all about practice. And it's all about the fundamentals. So to convert this to a binary string, this address, we'll start with the number 192. And all you're doing is working from left to right and continually asking yourself one question. Can I subtract this number from the current remainder, and it sounds you know a little formal there. Once you're doing it, you'll see what I mean. You'll see how easy it is as well. Let's look at this chart and ask ourselves, can we subtract 128 from 192? Is that possible? Certainly it is. So we're going to put a 1 right there under 128. So that gives us a remainder of 64. I'm not going to do all that math here on the whiteboard because you can do that quickly there at home. But 192 minus 128 is 64. Can we subtract 64 from 64? Certainly we can. We'll put a 1 right there. 